Hello everyone! As you might have guessed, today we are going to see how we can add health checks to our application. And as well, how we can build a simple watchdog that would notify us in case there are failure in the application components. First of all, let me go over what a health check is. It's simply an exposed HTTP endpoint that can be configured to provide information about the state of the application components. For example, if your application has a database that you are using or another web service, you need to be able to track if any of the dependencies are not working, so you could fix those issues fast without letting the business lose customers. Another use case is scaling your application. For example, you have a traffic manager or a load balancer. It needs to know which of the instances is available to process the requests. If any of the instances goes down, it should not redirect traffic to that one instance until the issues are fixed. .NET Core has built-in support for health checks and a planter of Nougat packages with pre-built health checks. Today we are going to see how to implement a basic database and external HTTP service check for your application, as shown in the previous schema. As well, I'll show you how you can build a watchdog that will send you notifications over Teams channel whenever an issue with some specific application occurs. Let's get an overview of the packages that we are going to use in this video. The first three are health checks for SQL Server, health checks for a specific URI and health checks for Entity Framework Core. The next three packages are the ones we are going to use for our watchdog, health checks UI, health checks UI client and UI in memory storage. To start off, we need to go to our program.cs. In the configuration section, add basically Builder services add health checks. This will add the health check service to our dependency container. The next part is basically in here. We are going to write app dot use health checks and specify the basic route for our health checks. So if we run this right now and we will open our postman and send a request to it, we are going to get a healthy result response. This will configure the basic health endpoint. Usually this will suffice in case we have some simple processing components, but in our case we want and we are planning on communicating with a database and communicating with an external service. So we need to know if those other components are available as well. So I will stop my solution, go in here and add a DB context check basically. And in here specify that I want to test against my test database context. So if I run this again and we go over, I can send a request. It's a half response. Let me open the dashboard for my Docker container. Since I'm using the SQL server with an Azure SQL Edge, if I stop this container right now, my health check should fail. So in here, we should get an unhealthy response right now. As you can see, the response was unhealthy. Now, if you're using SQL Server without any framework, you could add this check as well. Basically add SQL Server builder configuration dot get connection string and you specify the connection string to your SQL Server, you could have a similar health check. Okay. I will delete this one since I'm not going to use it. And before we go over to the next component, if we go over to our health endpoint, you can see that we have here only a word healthy or unhealthy, which is not really descriptive. Moreover, when we'll have more than one health check set up, this will still be the same response that we are getting. I prefer to have a more explicit response of my health services. This is why I would advise you to use a response writer that you can configure when you specify in here new health check options. Basically, we are going to do that right now. In the packages that we have imported, 
we have already a UI response writer that will do the job. If I debug this right now and we go over to our postman, if we send a request in here, as you can see, the response is more structured and we have our test DB context in here with the duration, status and tags. If you would like to specify a name for the check, you could do that by passing here the name. So if I run this once again, and we go over to our postman and send a request. Yeah, as you can see, the name changed. For now, this will be the starter setup that we are going to use. Later in this video, I'll show you how you can take it one step further. If your solution has an external dependency on an HTTP service, you could add health checks for that one specific service by using add URL group health check where you specify the URI for that service health endpoint and you can pass in a specific name. This is the simplest way you can set up a health check to an external service. But we are going to take it one step further. So I'll remove this and in the dependency action you can see that I have a legacy service that I am injecting. So we are going to write a specific custom health check for this specific iLegacy service which has a method is alive because in my practice I've had times where some legacy services were going down really often and we had to keep track of that one. So basically for that we are going to write a custom health check in here specify that we are inheriting from the iHealth check implement the member in here inject the legacy service next bear mind if the service is healthy so bar is healthy equals legacy system is alive next if is healthy we are going to turn a healthy result or an unhealthy result since we have the health check in place we could go over to a program that says in here add add check custom health check and specify a name legacy service so for the demonstration purpose, I'll, I am going to set is healthy to true for a second right here. So I'm going to debug this. Next, we are going to go to our postman, send a request. So the legacy service is healthy and I'm going to rerun this application without that boolean set to true. And we are going to test run a couple of calls. So yeah, as you can see, there is an unhealthy result in here. There is a healthy result. Yeah, so this component is behaving randomly as I was expecting it. I think to be aware with the custom health checks, if in here we are going to throw an invalid operation exception, the health check will fail, but it will expose the internals of this exception which you might not really desire if the API isn't open. So if I send this request right now I'll resume it, go over to Postman and if you can see that I have the description, I have the exception etc etc. You need to be very attentive if you're exposing the health checks to the internet. Okay now that we have our health checks we would like to create a monitoring component over them that will use those health checks and notify us in case we have failures. The easiest way to do that is basically by using the health checks UI packages. So for using that, we'll have to go into our services. First of all, configure the health checks UI. Basically add health checks UI in here. For the UI part, to work we need to add in-memory storage for now. Next we are going to map the health check UI basically in here app.map health checks UI. Next with this setup in place you would go to the app settings 
and add this configuration for your health checks UI where we specify the health checks UI and basically the endpoints that it's going to use. In our case, it's our own application, which is on port 7223 and we specify the health endpoint in here. In your production environment, you might use more than one application that you are going to track. Basically in here, you might have this one and then copy of it and just say sample app dot two. So if I debug this configuration right now, we are going to have two sample applications in here, basically like our configuration. And if we open them, we can see that we have a legacy service and the application context. So I'm going to stop my configuration right now, remove the redundant service over here and leave it like this. And we would like to add some notifications for cases when our component goes down. For that, I'm going to add a webhooks section in here, which is basically an array of different connectors. I'm going to copy and paste in here a Teams connector, which is basically just a template that of the message that's going to be sent over to Teams channel. In case the component goes down, this payload is going to be sent to the Teams channel, which is basically an action to open the dashboard, which targets the local host health checks UI. In case the component is back online, you can use a restore payload, which will basically just tell that everything is up and running again. For creating this connector in your Teams channel, you are going to go to the channel in here add a connector. Next, we are going to wait a little bit for the options. And then here you can see incoming webhook that you can configure. We are going to provide a name, what, which will be watchdog. Create this connector URI and paste it right here. In order not to trigger too many messages in our custom health check, I'm going to use this part of unhealthy result at first and now I'm going to debug the solution. Basically in here we have an unhealthy result already and now go over to the Teams channel. As you can see I have a notification that the sample app has failed and if I click on open dashboard it goes over to the sample application. And that's how you would basically set up a watchdog to monitor your application and send you notifications over to your Teams channel.